Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plant seeds of a pitcher plant or an apenthes. This is it over here. It has all the pitchers. And like I just said, I'm going to show you how to plant the seeds of one of those plants. How to get it to go from this tiny little seeds to a really big plant like that. It's a fairly simple process, but there are quite a few things you need to keep in mind and steps to take. So let me turn around the camera and um, yeah, talk a little bit more about them when I do that. First off, let me just show you guys the plant. I have it on the drying rack here next to me. It's just uh, drying out, because you know, that's what the drying rack is for. But the plants, they form these beautiful little traps like this. These are called pitchers, and they are modified leaves, basically, that capture and eat and digest insects if you didn't know that and obviously the plant itself it looks like that <laughs> it just forms a growth out the ground the stem has these leaves and at the end of the leaf it has a little tendril and this little tendril forms into this little pitcher and that little little pitcher slowly inflates up to a pitcher about this size now, some of you guys might think, yeah, this lid closes on an insect or something. No, it doesn't. It literally just stays open like that. Um, I'm not too sure uh, why the lid is there. It's basically what I believe and what a few people have said is that it just helps prevent rain from falling inside of the pitcher because, you know, if there's insects and food inside of the pitcher, if water fills up, it will overflow and all the food that it's caught will obviously get spilled out into the ground. So... Yeah, that's why it has a lid. For no other reason, it doesn't close on them, so don't think that it does. Um, secondly, these beautiful plants, they have this peristome over here. This little peristome here. And it's quite hard, actually, and it's very slippery for insects. So when insects come to eat the nectar that is ex excreted at the bottom of this lid here of an apenthes, they will walk on this peristome, and it's very slippery, and they fall inside where they drown in that water. I don't know if you guys can see that splashing around in there. They'll fall inside of there and slowly drown and then the plant eats it. This is literally like a little stomach that you can hold and see of a plant. And of course, as you can see, it makes a lot of them. These are older ones from when they were growing somewhere a little bit better. Um, and these are all newer ones, of course that it's created since I moved to where I currently am. And then hopefully by the end of the year, I'm gonna sell the plant because I want to move to, as some of you may know, to the States. But that's being, that's becoming quite a difficult one to do guys because, you know, I don't know, getting there is so difficult because of visas. So basically there's the, like, I need to get employed by someone or marry an American. <laughs> so it's, I don't know what I'm gonna do guys. But yeah, that's not what the video is about. It's about these plants. So let me show you how this pack of seeds is sown so that you can get a plant that looks just like this. Yeah, I'll turn the camera now. Okay guys, so here is our little pot and here are our seeds. As you guys can see from this clip, these seeds are quite small. In the center of them, you may see the actual seed part and the pieces sticking out is what I like to call the wings. And what the wing does, sorry, there's mosquitoes biting me. What the wing does is that it helps the seeds float around whenever the wind blows. It helps them to travel, you know, further distances and whatnot so that the seeds can spread. And, you know, the whole, that's the whole point of plants reproducing so they can spread their seed everywhere. Anyway, this is the packet that we have now. And the process of sowing these seeds is very, very simple. Now, I do remember in the previous video, I did say, do you guys want me to do a giveaway or do you want me to just sew them? Most of you guys actually said sewing them and some said both. So it will be easier for me to just sew them rather than trying to figure out how to run a competition. And anyway, these seeds aren't viable for a long time. So if I do send it to someone, it might take a while and the seeds you get will end up being unviable, which is you know, very disappointing. So yeah, anyway, I have a pot here. And what is in this pot is sphagnum, sphagnum peat, oh, not peat, just sphagnum moss. 
which is currently very, very sparse at the moment. Like, if you have a bale of the stuff, which I do have, it's quite expensive to find, mainly because the, no one has it anymore, because of all the supply chain shortages and whatnot. More mosquitoes, and it bit me. Got it, though. Look at the blood on my hands. Anyway, guys, what you want to do is you want to get a pot, of course, of sphagnum moss, most preferably if you can, and fill up the pot with the moss and perlite. You can use orchid bark or um, sand or something, just essentially what you want is a very free draining media that doesn't hold water. So when you pour water in the top, it drains out very freely, but it retains moisture. If you've ever grown an orchid, you should know what I mean. So basically what I have here is literally just a pot of peat, uh, sphagnum and perlite, and on the top is sphagnum that I chopped up very, very finely and I laid it flat on the surface so that any seeds has very good contact with this top layer of soil here. And the reason why we want good contact is because the seed only starts growing when it, touch, when it feels the water. Do you understand? It needs to feel the water around it. So if you make it very flat, the seeds can lay on this surface here and then hopefully they will start growing. So that is the simple part of it, guys. Putting the seeds on is very, very simple. What you then do, take your seeds, just like this, open up the packet. I'll show you guys on camera. Open the packet. And you can see that the seeds are these straw colored ones here. And this is the seed pod. So this is what a flower of an Apenthes looks like. Very alien-like. Now there may be some seeds still left inside there, so make sure that you do check if you have a pod. And I hope to have removed all the seeds out of those pods, but what you simply do, guys, and this process is for most cannabis plants, you take your paper and you tap it like that. You can see the seeds are slowly falling down. Okay, I'm gonna tap from the other direction. And you want to simply tap the seeds onto the soil and spread them out as best you can. Now obviously I did get them wet, so they're gonna be sticking to the middle, but just keep doing this. Quite a few, quite a few of the seeds are actually stuck to the paper still, so I'm just using my hands to get them down. But there we go, guys. Now we have the seeds on the surface of our pot. And what I will do now is I will gently, you have to be very careful guys, very gently just try to spread them out because I didn't do a great job of spreading them out beforehand, now did I? And I will gently just tap them into the soil so that I can ensure that they have good contact with the soil because remember, we want them to feel the moisture around them so that they know, hey, it's water. We can, there's another mosquito. I missed, I caught it, but then it got out. Damn it, guys, these damn mosquitoes. Oh, it's on my finger there. Oh, ran away. There's two mosquitoes flying around, guys. I'm gonna get one of them. Let me continue trying to put these seeds onto the soil. And yeah, I guess that is the best that I can do for now. And what I will do, what I recommend you guys do too, is that you get a spray bottle and you spray down these seeds with the water, obviously just distilled rainwater or reverse osmosis water. And why you do that is so that you can ensure that they get water to them right now and that it pushes them further down onto the soil. That is very, very important, guys. Now, after that, once you have sown your seeds, you wanna keep them somewhere obviously moist. So I keep them in this tall container with water and some are humid. So what this container has is a lid. Let me check it, this mosquito. Damn it, I missed. I think I got it. I don't know. I think I got it because there's blood over there. Anyway, you wanna get a little something to keep it nice and warm and humid. So I will be taking this inside where it stays warm because it is currently winter here in Australia. So I'm gonna take it inside, keep it warm, keep it humid, keep it watered. And in a couple months, we should, you know, cross our fingers, we should get some sprouts. 
So make sure you do subscribe to the channel so that you can keep yourself updated on their growth. Because I will do an update when they start sprouting. And that's about it, guys. This is a cross. I forgot the cross. It's quite a big one. It has a uh, Viking in it with Costa Cos Siena and something else. Um, so it's not a very flashy looking plant. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. We want to give away. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Their, their care guide for when you have them growing is the same as for when they're seeds. Keep them humid. Keep them... In most cases, you want them to stay fairly warm, never below freezing, never above really 30 Celsius. And keep them watered. Ensure that they stay damp, not sopping wet. You want to top water them if you can. And that will give you the best success of growing these plants, guys. Let me just turn the camera around real quick. I've just caught two of them. And now I've got a third one, I hope. Yep. I'm telling you guys, these mosquitoes, they're deadly. I don't know if there are any more now. But man, I'm going to be itchy. I wanted to just show you guys the plant. So this plant, like I was telling you guys, I've had it under my, my porch where it stays fairly shaded and obviously warm enough. They are outside here in winter, so it does get pretty cold where I am here at the moment. But they're very happy, as you guys can tell. This is all old growth, these ones here, from about this leaf here, this leaf, onwards. So about from here onwards has all been growth since I moved to this house, so it is vining at the moment. If you guys don't know, Nepenthes are actually vines. They grow up and into things and they climb, they grab stuff and they climb and then they'll picture, like this one here might picture because it's caught itself. And what that generally means is that it makes basils. So this plant also has two basils over here and the basils will continue producing more and more pitches, as you guys can tell. And like I said, it's best to top water them. I use a tray method for these guys, but I do leave them without water for like a week so they do dry out because they are very susceptible to root rot. So you have to be quite careful with the plants. Otherwise the care is as straightforward as making sure they get enough light, you know, just bright light, nothing direct like an orchid, enough water and enough humidity. And that is the basic, most basic of care for them. Most of them, if you get them from a big box store, they'll be grown like that. And that is how you sow their seeds. So hopefully these seeds turn into a plant like this one day for someone, because like I said, I want to move to the States, but it's not very easy. Maybe if one of you guys have a company or want to marry me, you can, uh, you know, hit me up yeah yeah anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative this is our nepen please so there we go guys i'll see you guys in the next episode